Hello guys, this is Akos here, coming to you with a video of Art Talk. So in this first video, let's define art. Why exhibit works of art? What is art? According to Wikipedia, in European academic traditions, fine art is art developed primarily for aesthetics or beauty, distinguishing it from applied art, which also has to serve some practical function such as pottery or most metalwork. Hmm, that doesn't give us a convincing definition. Here's another one. Historically, the five main fine arts were painting, sculpture, architecture, music and poetry, with performing arts including theatre and dance. Now this is getting closer, but still we'll need a lot more to understand at least the skeleton of the definition. The applied arts are the application of design and decoration to everyday objects to make them aesthetically pleasing the two often overlap. Oh, oh gosh. This one is worse than the other two. If Walter Gropius had heard this, he would have punched the author in the face, I'm pretty sure. One definition of fine art is a visual art considered to have been created primarily for aesthetic and intellectual purposes. And this is more like it. And judged for its beauty and meaningfulness, specifically painting, sculpture, drawing, watercolor, graphics and architecture. A craft of trade is a pastime or a profession that requires particular skills and knowledge of skilled work. Pastime and trade? Ah, oh. all right. I'm not impressed with Wikipedia. So, most of us meet art in art museums, right? So what is an art museum for? Why we exhibit works of art? One function of a museum is to take care of ancient or unique works of art which are no longer on their original places. Therefore, they are in danger, the danger of destruction or neglect or otherwise. Uh, okay, but this doesn't necessarily involve their exhibition, right? Also, their original purpose should be explained to the public. This to be done with an educational purpose. Education of what? History? Art history? Whatever? But still, those are exotic or ancient artworks. Question can be asked. Is it necessary for museums to exhibit the works of living artists? What for? Those artworks are not in imminent danger. It is clear that the museum is advertising the artist on the behalf of the art dealer or to find a market for the artist. Okay, let's get back to this a bit later. Why exhibit an Egyptian bed, for instance? We kind of answered that question for an educational reason. It is evident that we need to propose to make a use of them as is possible without an actual handling. In that case we need to imagine that we are lying on that Egyptian bed or we are making or offering some ancient deity. The job of the curator is to prepare the exhibition. It is not only on the curator. The docent who explains the original purpose of the object and the original artist's methods. The artist who created the object. In order to comprehend the purpose of ancient artworks, we would need to place ourselves in that actual age and understand the everyday people's life. Well, that's impossible, obviously. On the other hand, that wouldn't be educational if we interpret such objects by our likes or dislikes, or assume that these people thought of art in our fashion, or that they had aesthetic motives, or, or they were expressing themselves. In order to fully understand the art of ancient cultures, or at least exotic cultures, we must examine their theory of art. Exhibition of an ancient Greek objects, for instance. Plato, the greatest Greek philosopher, calls it wholesome art, or true art, iconographically correct. Its purpose is to serve the body and the soul at the same time, not only the body. Okay, let's unpack this point. We can say that art is representation of a model, but not what the model looks like. Imitation of invisible things which have no looks. The artwork should remind us to the archetypes of the values. That way it serves the needs of the soul. Plato said, quote, 
through art we are able to adjust our own distorted modes of thought to cosmic harmonies. It's an assimilation of the knower to the to be known. That way we can see and experience the life's best. Plato is always in a view of the representation of invisible and intelligible forms. In Plato's opinion, the imitation of the empty surface of anything is despicable. Real art is a symbolic representation of things that cannot be seen except by the intellect. What is the natural instinct of the kids? First I think and then I draw my think. Children usually don't start observing things and analyzing their look before they draw them. First I think and then I draw my think. And we teach the children to stop thinking and only to observe. Okay, that's a different subject, not the topic of this video. For instance, canonical ancient Egyptian art. It's calculated or Western aesthetic, sentimental, or we can say materialistic culture prefers instinctive expression to the former beauty of rational art. Plato couldn't see the difference between a mathematician thrilled by a beautiful equation and the artist thrilled by their former vision. Please don't get confused, it is not the question of what is pleasant or unpleasant. We shouldn't admire pieces of art's aesthetic surfaces, but the logic and right reason of their composition. For instance, the beauty of the straight line and the circle is not like other things relative, but always absolutely beautiful. You cannot say that this circle is not beautiful. Oh, there is an ugly circle. Why is it ugly? Because it's so perfect. See the Greek archaic and Greek geometric art or the ancient Egyptian art. Let's put this in perspective. According to the archaic Greek art philosophy, an American Indian sand painting is superior in kind to any realistic empty landscapes or still life paintings. Once one of the directors of the Louvre said, quote, from Stone Age until now, what a decline. So, our Western abstract art is related to, or even inspired by, the formality of primitive art. The likeness, however, is superficial. Our abstraction, in most of the cases, is nothing more than mannerism. Why is that simplicity? Why is that geometricizing? Is it even a word, geometricizing? I think it is. Neolithic art is abstract or rather algebraic because in such forms that the polar balance of physical and metaphysical can be maintained. A Neolithic artist was not an interior decorator but a metaphysical person who saw life as a whole. Otto Benheimer from the Great Collector family said, quote, Primitive cultures provided for the needs of the soul and the body at the same time. So we need to return to the savage levels of culture. <laughs> and he was one of the first postmodernists. This is true for everything. Art should care for the bodies and the souls of the people. The country should care of the soul and the body of its citizens. We are in the illusion that we are emancipated artists with no obligation and no commitment of any kind. But this is an illusion. The truth is, artists are the slaves of the market and the salesmen. We artists are emancipated to express ourselves. We are the special kind of people, not like the workers who are not allowed to express themselves. Oh yes, that's right, we are all free to work or starve. That's why everybody thinks artists are the weirdos. Isn't that one reason why fine art seems useless in the eyes of the everyday people? The workers? We have gone too far to think of culture as something to be separated from life. It is the part of the leisure time these days. Aesthetic charming artworks. Aesthetic is a Greek word. Originally it refers to nothing but sensation or reaction to external stimuli. Art is an intellectual, not physical virtue. Beauty has to do with knowledge and goodness, which is precisely the attractive aspect of it. 
We are attracted to an artwork by its beauty, of course. However, beauty is one of the end results of an artwork, but not the purpose of it. The purpose is always the effective communication. It is not the aesthetic surfaces of the artworks, but the right reason or logic of the composition that will concern us. So why exhibit works of art? We are exhibiting not for aesthetic, but for expressive reasons. The fundamental judgment is the degree of the artist's success. Has the thing been well said? That is the matter. So that is why in every discussion of artworks, we must begin with their subject matter. We must not confuse taste with judgment or loveliness with beauty. Saint Augustine said, quote, some people like deformities. Works of art are generally ornamental or ornamented. We must not think of the ornament as something added to an object which might have been ugly without it. The beauty of anything is not increased by ornament, but made more effective by it. Ornament is characterization. Ornaments are attributes. We are often told that primitive ornaments have magical value. That's it. It would be more correct if we say metaphysical value. That is not decoration, but ornament makes the object to function spiritually as well as physically. The great philosopher Socrates said, quote, the distinction of beauty from use is logical, but not real, not objective. A thing can only be beautiful in the context of which it is designed. Critics nowadays speak of an artist as inspired by external objects or even by its material. Well, according to the great art philosophers, inspiration can never mean anything but some spiritual force within you. Dante Alighieri says in Divine Comedy in the Statement of Nature, quote, Art imitates nature in her manner of operation. That doesn't refer to any visible part of our environment. Plato says, according to nature. He does not refer as things behave, but as they should behave, not sinning against nature. If we believe that the appreciation of art is an aesthetic experience, we shall give the public what it wants. But it is not the function of a museum, of a gallery, of an artist or of any educator to flatter and amuse the public. In one respect, the public is right. It always wants to know what the artwork is about. We must give it to them. Go to the Louvre and let's tell them the painful truth that most of these works of art are about God, whom we never mention in polite society. God is taboo. Religion is a deadly taboo. You can run as many circles as you want, but this is the painful transcendental truth. This is the essence of ancient cultures. If you do not like the word God, you can call it the map of life, the wisdom to be applied to everyday matters. So we have been talking about rational, calculated approach and we ended up at the metaphysical subject matter. Look at the forecast of any culture. They are geometrical. We shall no longer pretend that the content of the folk art is anything but metaphysical. Our conclusion today? The anthropological approach to art is much valid than aesthetical. Let me finish this video with our today's guide, Plato, the great philosopher. Quote, we cannot give the name of art to anything irrational. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. We are going to come with more art related content. If you like to be updated, please subscribe. You guys have a nice day. Talk to you later.